Hello, how are you? My name is Victor, and can you believe we lit those scenes in the intro with $29 lights? These are the WeLight SO5s. It's Viltrox, just different brand for their lighting company. It comes in different colors. These are full RGB pocket lights, and we're not gonna go through a lot of specs, just the things that I care about, and then we're gonna go through the lighting breakdown and little things that I think they need to improve upon with these little pocket lights. So let's get started. So these lights have full CCT modes ranging from 2800 Kelvin to 6800 Kelvin. That's a good range for a $29 pocket light. Are they really color accurate? Well, I think they are from the looks of it. You can also adjust the tint. You can add some green in it, magenta in it. It's kind of like the aperture lights. It also features full RGB, the full spectrum. You can have a lot of different colors with these dial down the saturation. Uh, everything is on the app as well. For these lights, you don't really need the app, but it's a way more convenient option for you to operate them. But you can change the modes on here. You can dial down all the settings that you need with just the buttons on the light. These lights have gel matching options. That means it covers some of the Roscoe gels and Lee filters as well. And this is a really great feature because those are industry standard gels that used in movies, big productions, and a lot more things. For $29, $9 light gel matching is definitely a plus for these guys. Battery life on these are amazing, about 50 to 60 minutes full power, full blast at 100% with these lights. So that's awesome. Last but definitely not the least, they are super light. These are 108 grams a pop. Despite the plasticky build, this is actually a pro because of how light they are. Since these guys don't have much weight, you can use a gaff tape and just stick it to wherever you want it to be. Unlike the other brands like the Aperture, you need a strong magnet on the back of it. I mean, you can still use gaff tapes on those, but you actually have to secure it because it has a little weight to it. So let's get started with the lighting breakdown. The first scene here is only using one light. I did have two iterations of this scene, one with the color contrast and one with just the light. And I'll explain why I just went with one light. So in the top of the shower rack, there is one of these lights at 2800 Kelvin, 100%. And I pointed it up because I really wanted to get the light bouncing back down because if we point this down to ours, it's going to be just a harsher light. We want the light to be bounced because it disperses the light similar to what you can get with a soft box. It's not that soft, but at least it's a way for us to soften the light that's coming from here. This diffusion sheet in front does soften it up, but additional softening is needed for these kind of shots. And one common technique for basic cinematography is that you bounce a light to a wall, to your subject, or wherever you want to direct it. And that will give you a softer light to begin with. I was really happy with this, but I wanna show you guys the color contrast. Since we have an orange warmer tone on here, I wanted to try the, your typical orange and teal look. So I added a green light in front of it so that the foreground has a greener tone or a more teal colored tone. With color contrast, especially with warmer tones, you can directly use bluish tones, teal tones, and also green tones. Those are very close to the blue contrast for the warmer scenes. So that's what I used here. I think it looks good, but personally with this scene, I really wanted to make it super moody and to just have one top light that's bouncing off the wall. So this second scene is inspired by one of the shots in Joker. It's not really an exact replication, but it's definitely heavily inspired with the colors. So let's start with the key light. I put the first light bouncing into the wall at 100% so that it gives the ambient light throughout the whole room. And also it gives a soft wraparound for my face. And I used another light at 100%, 
point it at an angle to my face so it has that little intensity so that it mimics kind of like a soft box or a soft source that wraps around the face. These pocket lights have a small output so you really have to use one or two or maybe three depending on your scene to really sell it as a key light. You just need to be a little bit creative to use this as a key light. Okay. Let's talk about the backlight on this with the curtains. I used one of the gel matching features of this light, which I used one of the Lee filters with a golden amber setting. And this one just really creates this reddish amberish tone in the back so that we can replicate what we have here for our reference shot. And with an orange tone, it's a complete contrast with our blue dominant lighting for all the scenes. It's a great tool to separate your background and also give depth into your footage. We're not done with the scene because as you can see, the back of my head is still kind of blending in with the background. What we can do with this is that we can add a fourth light, which is a kick light so that it separates me from the background even more, especially people with black hair. You need that kick light so that it further separates the subject from the background. So without further ado, this is how it all comes together. Let's move on with the third scene. I think this was the most fun I've had with a small bathroom scene because one, we did three looks in the same lighting setup. I just changed the colors and learning color theory and using the basics of color contrasts or complementary colors really, really enhances your cinematography. So let's get started with the key light. First of all, I put one light on a Joby Gorilla Pod and I put that on the lighting fixture above my head and pointed 45 degree angle to the corner of that bathroom. That creates this sort of look. So this is a softbox that's like 45 degree angle towards my face. So it creates that shape. It has a lighter side on the subject and a fall off on the other one. So you have more depth and a pleasing shadow fall off with your subject. So that's the key light. Is that 2800 at 100%? Again, we had to bounce this light because we wanted to have a soft key light. We only used a second light after this. Nothing was really in the background, so I had to put a little bit of an element in there. So just a part of the light as a practical and it does light up the background as well. It gives the room ambient lighting and we just match that with the key light. So I have this really monochromatic look, but it still looks natural as a bathroom scene because I've seen a lot of these in movies and I just really wanted to recreate that warm look inside a bathroom. The next look with this one is inspired kind of like a Stranger Things vibe blue with the hint of red in the background. So for the blue key light, I just used a Roscoe gel matching preset, which was the brilliant blue. And then for the background, I just changed it to Roscoe pink magenta preset on the Wii light app. So the third look of this scene is heavily inspired by, you guessed it, Blade Runner. And it's when the scene where he was looking at the big holograph and it's just very purple and blue. So this is what we've done with it. What I use for the key light is just a Roscoe light rose purple and then a brilliant blue on the back. Things that I wish that was included or improved. One is magnets. I would love to have magnets on the back similar to the aperture, but again, with the lightweight setup, they had to cut back on something, which was the shell of this thing. This is all plastic and you literally can feel that it's worth $29. And lastly, during my testing, I found out some color inconsistencies with the different models. So if you put it on the color gel matching modes, these color, the other colors, the units, sorry, with different colored backs doesn't really match up that well. One of them is warmer and then two of them have green tones. So my suggestion is that if you're getting a bunch of these, 
get them in the same color so they're specced out the same with the color chips inside. I did present this issue to Viltrox to Wheelite and I hope they fix this issue in the future. And here's the winner for the S-Log3 luck pack giveaway from last week's video. Congratulations and to claim your prize just email me here. And as usual I'm giving away this S-Log3 luck pack. All you have to do to win is comment down below what you think about these budget lights and would you use them in your videos. And if you do want the luck pack now it's also available available in the link down below and at 10,000 subscribers we are giving away a camera and a lot more and we're so close so stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next video peace no one